surprising that you cut your price forecast. So where do you see it going now? And I just tease that we could be seeing a $20 a barrel mark there for oil. Is that a possibility? Yes, good morning. We've cut our, we've cut our forecasts uh, quite significantly uh, for this year, uh, principally forecasting now uh, in WTI uh, for it to average uh, $33 a barrel uh, for Q1 of this year. And then moving uh, uh, quite significantly higher up to around $48 uh, for the Q4 average, uh, which represents about a $10 premium to the current forward curve at that time of the year. We don't think we're going to get down to, uh, to $20. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, uh, too low, in our opinion. But the area, uh, one area of potential weakness in the, in the short term to watch out for that could provide quite an interesting uh, entry point for those people looking to gain exposure to these low prices uh, might come on Friday uh, uh, following the announcement yesterday of the Deputy Foreign Minister in Iran saying that uh, he feels that uh, the I International Atomic uh, uh, Energy Agency will uh, formally announce that Iran has met all of its, uh, its obligations under the July agreement. So we could get a, a bit of a knee-jerk reaction down, um, which could provide an interesting entry point. And, and what we're advising our clients to do, considering the steepness of the forward curve, which makes it very difficult to monetize um, these forecasts that a lot of analysts talk about, is to concentrate exposure uh, further down the curve, uh, specifically to buy the December um, 2016 WTI contract. And we recommend buying that at levels below uh, 50, uh, $40. Uh, we're currently around $37 at that level, with a view of it moving up to, uh, up to around $48, as I said earlier, at the end of the year. And by that way, you're, you're offsetting uh, many of the concerns about the steepness of the forward curve, and, and you're in the second half of the year where we see, hopefully we'll see, uh, finally, some meaningful signs of the U.S. production, the shale production rebalancing. Mark, so is that how you're playing the oil price at the moment? Is that your strategy? And uh, what could prompt a rebound of oil prices this year, if there is any? Uh, well, at the moment, it's very difficult to see, uh, to see anything uh, uh, for the first half of this year. I think that we're starting to see quite meaningful signs in the U.S., of shale production now switching to tier two wells, so less productive wells, and a decline in the oil productivity per rig now, uh, which, uh, which suggests that as we move into the second half of this year, we're gonna start getting more demonstrable uh, declines in this uh, shale production that's of course driven all of this weakness uh, over the last year. So until we get to that, uh, that, that time of the year, I think it's gonna be very difficult to, uh, to see anything short term that could flick prices up. Our only real upside risk that we talk about is the potential geopolitical risk that, of course, you always have in the oil market uh, and, of course, is uh, elevated at these very low numbers. Um, so uh, I, I think it's really a story, uh, a situation of using this first half of the year um, as a place to pick entry points. Um, in, in, in terms of oil, as I said, in, the, in contracts further down the curve or playing it in other asset classes, you know, equities it makes a lot of sense. Um, this month, for example, the, the S&P 500 energy sector is down 11 percent, which is huge, but oil is down 19 percent. Um, so that does afford a degree of protection. And, and at Société Générale, we've uh, developed uh, some quite interesting products that allow clients to switch automatically between equities and oil uh, to, to try and offset some of these, uh, these issues as we, as we move through the year. But in order to see any significant returns uh, there, doesn't oil have to be significantly more expensive than what it is at right now? Well, if you, if you come into the December, that is true, um, but uh, because of this forward curve, if you take the December 16 uh, uh, contract, which is uh, around $37, so, uh, so entering into that market at these levels, we think makes sense. Um, the, so, so with our forecasts um, for the Q4 average at around $48, there's about $10 of upside in excess of the forward curve that could be monetized 
um, by an investment uh, 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 at that level. So you're, you're absolutely right. It, it's very difficult, you know, to do anything. And, and, uh, and, and, and it, it, the challenge really lies in trying to pick points on the forward curve where you can for forecast supply and demand dynamics to be compelling enough to offset the steepness of the, of the, of the structure. Mark, and let's talk about a little bit about gold, because you mentioned that we could play gold weakness through silver. Explain that for us. Yes, we're bearish gold, and we've been bearish gold for, for a few years now, and continue to be so. Um, and uh, the thing with gold is it's, 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 it's not really behaving as, as many people expect it to behave in terms of its safe haven appeal. And we expect it to average $1,000 an ounce this year, but moving down to around 955 in Q4 of this year. Now, that's not a, a huge degree of movement. And, and, and one market that we see that often gives us quite an interesting uh, exposure to gold is, of course, silver, also being a precious metal, being much more volatile than gold. Uh, and, 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 and by Playing that from a short perspective, um, for example, through the use of options, uh, we might expect to see later in this year, following uh, the, uh, the, the, the profile of interest rate hikes from the Fed that we expect, for that to move significantly lower than gold, potentially.